directory that I wanted, all using the web based interface. So very, very cool stuff. Just imagine if you have a Linux server running somewhere and you want to download a movie or you want to download some music, you can just uh, paste the URLs into that webmin interface and download it straight away. You can also upload things to your server. So for example, I'm going to choose a file. Let's see what I got. Nice Star Trek picture here. I'm going to choose a file on my Ubuntu server where I want to upload it to. So for example, you want to send files to your server at home. There we go. I'm going to put it in the documents directory as well. OK. Upload. And there you go. It has been uploaded. Now, if we are if we want to download a certain file from our Ubuntu server to the computer that we're working on, even more easily. I'm going to go back to that tar file I just downloaded from Webmin. Where's the documents here? I'm going to download it to my computer. This is the file I would like. Can I please download it? And there you go. The download is starting and I am downloading the file to my computer. So just take a look at the, uh, the trick I did here. I downloaded a file from the internet onto my Ubuntu server and now I am downloading it from my Ubuntu server to the laptop I am working on at the moment. And I've also showed you how to upload a certain file to your Ubuntu server. So you see very, very powerful stuff, this upload and download function. And we're going to take a look at some other ones a little bit later on. The networking tab also offers us some great possibilities to play around with. Not only can you activate bandwidth monitoring to keep, keep a lookout for what bandwidth you are using, but the most important one is the Linux firewall. This one gives you the ability to completely configure your IP tables firewall using a web-based interface. So no more editing command files or, or configuration files, no more mucking around with uh, nano or VI. No, you can just you do it right from here. Now, in this case, I only have one Ethernet card, so uh, it's not very useful to set up a firewall. But as you can see, you can do quite a lot of neat things using the firewall. There is also an entire setup firewall menu that will enable you to completely configure the IP tables firewall using the web interface and it makes it a lot easier. You can, uh, you can uh, see that you can easily create rules for input, forward and output. Uh, you can revert to a certain configuration. You can apply to a certain configuration and if you're pleased you can activate your firewall at boot. This is very interesting if you're using your uh, Ubuntu server X as a router or as a firewall and it will give you great, great, uh, very um, versatile um, options on configuring that firewall. If uh, you want to configure your network and uh, do some things that we showed you how to do in the command line a few shows ago, you can also do it using the network configuration uh, module where you can see you can easily change and set certain options of your network card. Be aware that you are doing this over the network, so don't take your network cards down or don't take your network interfaces down, otherwise you won't be able to do so anymore. The hardware tab, uh, some interesting options over there are the partitions on local disks module. That is a cool module that will uh, show you how your hard drive is actually um, divided. I have a primary and an extended partition and what partitions are put on there. And you will also be able to play around with your system time and synchronize your system to other servers outside. So you will always have the best time and have a great time. <laughs> no pun intended. So the hardware tab is also pretty interesting. Now, 
The last one we're going to talk about is the unused modules tab. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of modules that are unused. These are modules that exist that you can use to configure certain services on your server. Now, for the moment, I'm not really using them. As you can see, there aren't a lot of them. Uh, there are a lot of uh, services on this list and they are being unused. Now, for example, let's say I want to set up Samba file sharing. I want to set up Windows file sharing. Now, it's not installed on this system, so how am I going to do that? I'm just going to go to the unused modules. I'm going to scroll to the Samba Windows file sharing. Now, of course, Samba Windows file sharing isn't installed on this server by default. Now, the module won't work because it doesn't have a service to talk to. Now, look at this. It says, the server executable, Samba, was not found. Either Samba is not installed on your system or your module configuration is incorrect. Samba can be automatically installed by Webmin. Click here to download and install it using apt. So, imagine that if you have a certain service that is not installed on your Ubuntu server, you can even use Webmin to install that service. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here and Webmin is going to download and install Samba on this system for me. So, we're going to give it some time. And there it is. And if we go to servers, Samba Windows file sharing is installed. So even if you need certain services and they're not installed on your system as yet, you can use the unused modules in Webmin. Okay, that was it. Using Webmin to configure your Linux system. Now, as you might see, the installation of Webmin is very, very simple, and I have tried to touch on some items of the Webmin, uh, well, suite, if you want to call it like that, uh, just to show you what it's capable of. But as you can see, it can do a lot, a lot more. Every service that is available on a Linux server is probably configurable using Webmin. There is a ton of well-written documentation out there. If you just take a look at the Webmin website, you will see a wiki, a link to a wiki, and some very, very simple screenshotted how-tos on how to set it up. I will also provide a link to an older series I have written about configuring um, your Linux server as a file server using only Webmin to do it. Uh, I've written it up a few months ago. It's, I think, for Feisty but it will still work on the latest version of the Ubuntu server because Webmin doesn't change that much. A note of caution, if you want to use Webmin uh, over the internet, that means opening up a port on your router and accessing your Linux server from another location over the internet through the World Wide Web, be sure to make uh, to make sure that you have a good password and that you might want to change the default port of Webmin 10,000, perhaps to something else, so the people who come knocking at the door of your router don't immediately expect what's behind port 10,000, because they know port 10,000 is Webmin. So if you're doing this over the internet, caution is advised, and make sure that you have good passwords. Now, I wish you all the fun in the world with Webmin, and for those of you who fear the command line, I hope I have given you a very nice tool. There is also a free book downloadable on the internet, and it's a PDF, and it's called, uh, it's, what's it called? Um, How I Loved Webmin, and or something about using Webmin and how I learned to love Linux. So, uh, I'll put a link to that PDF in the show notes so you can download an entire manual about Webmin with nice screenshots. It's of an older version of Webmin, but it still applies. Nothing really changes except for the look and feel, and you will really be able to get the power of your Webmin interface right out there and let that technology work for you. 
That's it for me for this week. I'm off to uh, edit and have a nice evening. So feedback, please send your feedback to nightwise at nightwise.com. I want to say, thank everybody who's been leaving comments on the blog, who's been sending me emails. We really, really appreciate it. Niana says, thank you everybody who has sent her a birthday email or birthday wishes. And you can find us just about anywhere. Follow us on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash nightwise. Find us on Facebook. Um, there is a fan of, fans of nightwise.com uh, community out there that you can join. We can keep you updated. And of course, email nightwise at nightwise.com. You know the drill. So if you have any questions about this topic, please feel free to contact me. I'll be sure to answer you and point you in the right direction if I don't have the answer and provide you with the answer if I do. This was Nightwise for KW TV 0012, installing your Linux server part three using Webmint. And I hope you have a great week and let that technology work for you. Bye.